is with you wherever you are, wherever you are listening to this message, wherever you are listening to this sermon. So, in today, we like to talk about fear. We all are surrounded with fear, and even when we read the great men and women of God in the Bible, sometimes there was a moment when they were afraid. So first, it is normal for you to have fear, but that fear must not take away your faith. That fear must not shift your focus from serving the true God. Right. So, when you read the book, you discover that the Bible is open and honest to us. That all great men and women of God, at some point, they faced fear. And all they could do, it is either was to face the challenge, others was to run away, and others at some point, they had to lie. For instance, like our father Abraham at some point when he was going to Pharaoh, when he was going to the land of Egypt, he heard that Pharaoh loves beautiful women. So, he has to what? He has to say Sarah was not his wife. He has to say Sarah was only his sister. So I don't know your situation that brings fear to you, but I'm here to tell you that child of God, do not be afraid. It's a phase that you are passing through when you are afraid. Even when you look at Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they also had fear, but they trusted God. That's why they said, even if God saves us, or if he does not save us, we will not bow down to your image, King Nebuchadnezzar. Even Daniel, when he was thrown into lion's den, he just trusted God. He just trusted God. He was afraid also. So I'm here to tell you that whatever is causing you to be afraid, whatever is bringing the spirit of fear to make you stop focusing and trusting God, it's a phase, child of God, that you are going through, that you are passing through. And in no time, it will soon come to an end. But you have to hold on to your faith and believe that Jesus Christ died for you to overcome this fear that you have. We all have got fear. Even great leaders, mighty men of God, they all have got fear. But reading the word of God and strengthening yourself in the Lord will help us, me and you, to overcome this fear. So, child of God, in this world where we are living, you must have faith. This is why you have to pray that your faith must not fail you because you can be having faith, but you can also be surrounded with fear. So now, how do you overcome this? You come back to the Word of God and read the Word of God. You cut the scriptures and point out that fear and say, For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. What is the work of the devil that we are facing today? The works of the devil that we are facing today. The works of the devil that we are facing today is sickness and disease. The works of the devil that we are facing today can be difficulties in our businesses, in our workplaces. That on its own can bring fear to you. But child of God, do not be afraid because the Lord is our strength and is always by our side. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. But he never said that we will not go through different kinds of trials and tribulation. This is why in everything, child of God, be encouraged with this scripture. Hallelujah. John 16, 
verse 33. John chapter 16, verse 33. Because in this world, there will be difficult moments. In this world, there will be sickness and disease. Right, John chapter 16, verse 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So when you are afraid, call the right scripture. At that moment when you are filled with fear, when you everything, when you look to the left, to the right, and you are afraid and you don't know what to do, call the scripture. Be reminded of the words of Jesus Christ. He said, in this world there will be trials and tribulation. In this world there will be difficult moments. So what does this mean? This means that in this world sometimes your marriage can be facing a hardship, a hard time, a difficult moment. This means that at your workplace, sometimes you might be fired. That does not mean you're not a child of God. This means that sometimes you can find yourself in the hospital in the bed, sick, praying every day, but this sickness seems not to be going. This is why when you measure your Christian life with the results after prayer, you are likely to give up easily. This is why when you are a child of God, you must have the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They quoted to say, even if God saves us, even if he does not save us, we will not bow down. Same applies to you when you are sick. In that bed when you are praying and crying out for God to have mercy on you, when you are praying in that bed, crying out for the Lord to heal you, to take away this affliction, this sickness, this disease, you need to remember also to quote this word. Even if I die with this sickness, I will never bow down to it. I am a child of God. I belong to the kingdom of God. So child of God, I don't know your story, I don't know your situation, I don't know what is causing fear in your life. To many, it's already month end, it's the beginning of the month, there are renters, there are bills, school fees, a lot of kind of things that are frustrating us because we are in this world. These are trials, these are tribulations that the Lord spoke about, that in this world you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Why did the Lord leave us with those words at that time? God knew, Jesus Christ knew that a moment like this will come where we believers will be afraid. Many of us Christians, we are asking ourselves the question to say, but why is God not answering me? I have been in church for so many years, I've been praying, I've been fasting, but it seems like as if nothing is happening. You are busy, child of God, asking yourself questions, but at the end of the day, I am here to tell you that God is not silent. He is still saying something in your situation. I don't know what you might be going through right now. I don't know your situation. I don't know your storm. But at this hour, at this time, as you are paying attention, whether you are just passing by, checking this video, I am here to tell you that there are more challenges that we are going to face in this world. There are more difficult days that are coming our way, but as children of God, we need to focus on the cross. We are approaching the end times, and we are seeing it all happening in these, our daily lives where we are moving. We are slowly entering in the season of the end days. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I will read. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden distractions come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. 
You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But at least let us who are of the day be sober, putting in the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. So, whether we like it or not, the day of the coming of the Lord will come as a thief. Nobody knows the time, nobody knows the hour, nobody knows the year. But we can see with the signs that are taking place that we are slowly approaching the end of the days. And as we are slowly approaching the end of the days, this is what is going to happen. First, Second Timothy chapter 3. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into household and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins. Right. Read it and you understand it. It's the first book, second book of Timon chapter 3. The last days on what is going to be happening. People are boastful, people are arrogant, people are full of pride. These are the days that we are in. Nowadays people love money more than the word of God. We see a few people sacrificing to come into God's kingdom. Majority of people, they are coming to God, but they are not coming with a full heart. Majority of us, we now come to God because of what we can get, instead of worshiping God for who He is. So because of that, it will be difficult for you to get rid of fear in your life. Because when you see that you don't have money, you'll be afraid, you'll be shaking. When you see that you are facing a storm, a difficult moment in your wedding, you will be shaking. So, child of God, how do we overcome this fear? We can only overcome this fear when we hold on to the truth of the cross. Remembering the words of the Lord that says, in this world there will be trials and tribulation. So it means that, child of God, in this world, yes, there are going to be difficult moments. If all of us can learn to talk truth time and again, then we will be able to encourage each other in the ways of the Lord. Many of us are crying to say, God, I've been praying, I've been fasting for so many years, but I still can't achieve this, I still can't achieve that. How do you know if God has given you what you have been praying for, if today your faith in God was going to still be as you are today? How do you know? So there are a lot of things that are happening in our daily lives, child of God. But I'm here to tell you that Christ is aware of everything that we are going through. What we have to do, summon courage, enter into that storm and say, whether I die or I live, I am not going back to bow to your sickness. I am not going to bow to your difficult time. I will continue to talk about Jesus. For Jesus Christ came to set us free from the bondage of Satan. What we are facing, what we are going through are difficult moments of this world. What we are facing every day are difficult moments of this world. But if we remain focused and don't lose focus, we shall have the faith. Just like Mishak Shadrach and Abednego who said, King Nebuchadnezzar, no matter what you can say to us, we are not bound to your image. They knew their God. 
they knew whom they believed in. They were ready to die for him. But to us, child of God, today's Christians, whenever we face a storm, we insult the men of God. We call them names. We insult the churches that once helped us, the pastor that once prayed for us. We insult them and call them names and say they are not called. I am like this because of this. No, child of God. Why is it when you are facing a difficult moment, you start remembering the offerings that you made at a church? How do you know maybe it was an offering that God did not accept? Just like Cain and Abel. We know the story of Cain and Abel when we read the book in the book of Genesis. When they were presenting their offerings, Cain came with his offering, so was Abel. Right. Let us read. This is what the Lord said. Right. It was the time for them to present what they had before God. I'm talking to you who's complaining that you have been giving, you have been giving, but it's like God is not recognizing you. There is no way you can give to God and God cannot come through. There is no way. Because giving to God, giving to a house of God, giving to a man of God, you are planting a seed. You are promoting the work of Christ. So how can God leave you unattended when you are making sure that his kingdom is known everywhere? That the servant of God can go anywhere and touch lives and change lives and change destination for the salvation, for the coming kingdom of Christ. Because you, when you have been saved, your duty is to make sure that you help others to be saved. Right. Go and read Genesis chapter 4 for the sake of time and understand that the two men presented their offerings before God. But another one, it was accepted to the other one, it was not accepted. Because of that, he got angry. If you are a Christian who keeps on complaining, if you are a Christian the, who, who, who is not grateful, if you are a Christian who is jealous of why others are being blessed, why you are not, and you are failing to check your heart, when fear comes away, you will be destroyed, and there won't be any place for you to go and worship. Because if your heart is destroyed, if your heart is destroyed, if the enemy can succeed by just destroying your heart, then that's it. That's the end of you. So, child of God, we are in a season whereby we are surrounded with fear. Yes, it is true. Even me who is talking to you, at some point I'm afraid. But because I kneel down and pray, I find strength. There is a force of God that operates in levels that we cannot understand. When you pay attention to God's word, when you meditate on the word of God and continue to cry out and say, Lord, have mercy on me. And you present yourself with humility before God, the way you approach him, you approach God with humility. God has got a way of calming the storm for you. If you want to overcome fear, child of God, check yourself, how do you approach God? Check yourself, how do you surround, how do you live with people around you? Check yourself, child of God, when you see things seem, seemingly not working for you. Check your love walk with others because Christ is love. Jesus Christ commands us to love one another. For us to live a blessed life, we need to love one another. But if all those things are lacking in you, child of God, it's going to be difficult for you to overcome fear. God is more interested on how you treat your neighbor. That's why he say, you shall love your neighbor the way you love yourself. God is more interested on how we treat each other. Not how you behave, you behave in your private house or wherever you are at your workplace in your company. Yes, that's your blessing God has blessed you with. But God is more interested on how we relate with each other. God is so much interested on how I talk with my wife. Whenever there is a difficult moment, whenever there is a difficult situation, God is so much interested on how I bring love back to the house. God is so much interested on how you uplift others. Is it blessing them financially so that they can become better people? God is interested in that. Building love, building one another. If we cannot have ways to defeat fear, child of God, the day of the Lord will come as a thief 
end we will not be ready when that day comes Jesus Christ is coming soon and we have to be prepared day by day things are changing people are giving up on their faith day by day people are finding it difficult to worship God because of challenges because of storms that surrounds people you might be one of them but the Lord is saying, look at your love walk so that you can be able to overcome fear. Look at your love walk so that you can be able to receive the blessings of God in abundance. Child of God, do not give up. Do not give up calling upon the name of the Lord. Even if you are surrounded with fear. Surrounded with fear, with difficult situations. How can you overcome that? Yes, I said in the beginning, we all have got fear. Even when you read the Bible, a great prophet of God who brought down the temple of Baal and his followers, he prayed and fire came from heaven and it burned. That's why they're saying, God of Elijah, send down fire. But he was running away now from Jezebel. He forgot that he's got the power to destroy this Jezebel. But child of God, I'm here also to say the Bible is a guide to our daily lives. It is our manual because this is where we find how we are supposed to live our daily lives. Elijah was surrounded with fear. He forgot that he was a great man of God. He forgot that he was flowing with anointing to do things. But the voice of Jezebel shut him. This is why he ran to the mountains to hide. So child of God, never forget the testimony. Never forget what the Lord has done for you. In that moment when you are afraid, try to write down what the Lord has done for you. Where you have been. What you have been through. What people once said about you, try to write it down and call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. That fear will go. So child of God, if you want to overcome fear in your life, learn to read the Bible. See the examples of how others, our brothers and sisters, the great apostles overcame the fear. You read the word of God and the word of God will direct you. God can speak to you. Sometimes you don't need a pastor, you don't need a prophet. But when you pay attention to the word of God, God can direct you. You are his child. You are his child. Learn to stand up. You are the child of God. You are the most lovable. God loves us so much to an extent that he sent his only son to come and die for us here. So how can God leave you? Because he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But what we have to do, we need to be alert of Satan's trick, Satan's challenges, Satan's the way he operates into bringing us down. You just have to be concentrating on the word of God. Hold on to your Bible. Caught the scripture when you go to a difficult moment, you open the Bible to Psalms 90, Psalms 91, and you caught the scripture to, according to that situation, according to what you are facing, you open the word of God and you caught the scripture and you read it. You overcome the fear by reading the word of God, by pumping the word of God inside you so that any time, any time when you are attacked, you know how to call it. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Hallelujah. Nor of the person that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. So this means that in this world we'll be having situations, situations coming closer to us. But as long as we hold on to the anointing of the cross, 
we know that we are doing the right thing and the Lord will definitely see us through and that fear that we have will be a thing of the past but child of God thinking that Satan cannot touch you is what is destroying many of us Christians many of us believers thinking that Satan cannot touch your house thinking that Satan cannot touch your marriage thinking that Satan cannot touch your finances it's what has brought many Christians faith down today we forget the importance of the scripture that Christ came to give us direction Christ came to give us light he came to put us back to the track so that we go and meet the Father but he said challenges will always be there but when you speak positive and confess positive and declare the goodness and the righteousness of the Lord hallelujah and everything shall be added unto you that's Matthew 6 verse 33 seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything that you need shall be added unto you so what is it that you need you need a heart that can meditate on the Word of God in difficult moments you need to surround yourself with people who will encourage you to go deeper into your prayer life child of God it is a blessing to be with you at this hour as it is already about midnight it is a blessed moment for us to be here let us pray together Father, in the name of Jesus Christ and in the blood of Jesus Christ, whoever is connected with me right now, Father, I stretch my hand towards them in the name of Jesus Christ. Your healing hand is power. Spirit of the living God, I pray that your Holy Spirit enter into their homes and take away that affliction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We break every chain of limitation and progress that is taking place in your house right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that was not planted by God in your life that is causing setback, that is causing failure, that is causing deaths, that is causing misfortune, I say let it be broken in the name of Jesus Christ whatsoever was not planted by God in your life that is causing sickness and disease that is causing barrenness right now at this moment let the light of Jesus Christ enter your house enter your bedroom in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the light of Christ I pray that wherever you are the mercy of God be upon you. I pray that wherever you are, the Spirit of the living God be upon you. In the name of Jesus. Distance is not a barrier. The Spirit of God knows no boundary. Father, I send your light to that house right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I send the light of Jesus Christ into your marriage right now. I send the light of Jesus Christ into your business right now. Thank you, Lord, for the salvation of your soul. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Child of God, as children of God, we need to continue focusing on the way of Jesus Christ without the anointing without the power of Christ there is nothing that we can ever achieve we need the light of Jesus Christ we need the light of God in everything that we do may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore Amen. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.
May God bless you and thank you for tuning in. Remember, meditate on the word of Jesus Christ. Read your Bible and you will overcome fear. We all have got fear sometimes. But when we learn to walk in God's ways, in God's principles, fear will be a thing of the past. Shalom and God bless you. Thank you so much.